let's do some very expensive digging in. And I want to make it clear, I'm on record. I have long said when spending on the free agent market, get as young as possible and get as far as possible to the difficult end of the defensive spectrum. In other words, shortstop is the way to go. But the market did get a little crazy over the last three years. Here are the deals in that span for the top eight shortstops on the market. All were free agents except for Francisco Lindor, who was traded and then extended. Everyone has an average annual value over $23 million. $23 million a year and up. The deals range from 6 to 11 years. Look at 34, 33, 32, 27. Two of them will be 40 at the end of their deal. The good news is that a shortstop, as he ages, can move to third, corner outfield, then first base, then eventually DH. If a guy starts at DH, he just stays there forever. This plays better, but these are major investments. So let's start with one that does look good at present. Corey Seager is hitting 350, leading the league. He's got a 413 on base. He's slugging 631. That is an unbelievable slash line, and he's doing it with plus defense. He's about a five-win player already. Now, he's been hurt twice, and he's on the IL right now. But if your aircraft carrier shortstop is doing what Corey Seager is doing, you are in business. The funny thing is, he's about the only one. Strange thing is happening. Most of these guys are not playing great. Here are their numbers while with their new team. Some one year, some two, three years for Lindor. All right? So Lindor's at 113. Dansby Swanson, 113 as well. They're okay. Xander Bogart's at 111. You know, all pretty good. But wow, Tre look, Trevor Story has, has barely played for the Red Sox. Correa and Turner, 93 and 86. League average is 100. Those two are under league average right now. Now, Lindor's doing okay. Bogart's is doing okay. But they have eight and ten years running on their deals after this year. You would hope for a little better in the early years of these deals. Swanson is right there in the mix. That's about what you expect from Dansby Swanson. He's the best defender of the group. And by the way, for this year, he's making $20 million less than Lindor. Javi Baez, where is he? Right at the bottom. Another lackluster year. That deal hurts Detroit. And again, Story has barely played for the Red Sox, and he's in year two of a six-year deal. This is not promising. And to the original point, as these superstar shortstops struggle, young shortstops have emerged. Look at these guys. Matt McClain of the Reds slugging over 500 as a rookie. Geraldo Perdomo of the Diamondbacks has a 392 on base. He's only 23. C.J. Abrams is hitting league average for the Nationals. Zach Neto is about league average or better than league average and plus defensively for the Angels. Rookie. Bobby Witt is just about league average for the Royals. He's an excellent base runner. Ezekiel Tovar of the Rockies hasn't hit yet, but he's plus eight in defensive runs saved. Rookie. Anthony Volpe hasn't hit yet for the Yankees, but he's plus eight in defensive runs saved. Also an excellent base runner. Rookie. All these guys are 23 and younger. These clubs are getting similar production without spending $300 million over a full decade. They won't have a 40-year-old shortstop making big money sitting on the bench. Here are this year's OPS Plus leaders among shortstops. Of the eight in that superstar class, only Corey Seager and Dansby Swanson are in the top six. Seager's far and away number one. Then it's Bo Bichette, McLean, Perdomo, J.P. Crawford of the Mariners, who's bouncing back. The free agent market is supposed to give you some certainty. But even at the most desired position on the market, it has not.